Welcome to Larkin Gowan Insights, accountancy and business advice for all. A series that gives you bite-sized tips and guidance on tax, funding, legislation, reforms and much more. With case studies, business advisory and sector specials and even interviews, our team of experts are committed to helping you navigate the world of accounting and finance with a variety of presenters from across our specialisms. So, let's get on with today's show. Hi everyone, I'm Emma Walker. I'm a tax senior in our private client group and today we're going to be discussing the basis period reform. I'm joined today by Jamie Butcher who's a manager in our medical department. Hi Jamie. Hi Emma, thank you for having me today. No problem, thanks for joining. And I'm also joined by Laura Clayton who's an assistant manager in our farms and rural business department. Hi Laura. Hi Emma, it's my first podcast so excited to be here with you both. Fantastic. Well, we're really excited to have you on as well. So I think the best place to start is what is the basis period reform? Historically, uh, sole traders and partnerships might have had varying year ends, for example, the 31st of December to coincide with the calendar year or the 30th of September, which is another common one. Um, And they would have been taxed on the basis of their year end. So for example, if they had a year end of the 31st of December 2022, that would have been the year that they would have been taxed for their profits in the 2022 slash 23 tax year. This is going to be changing how that happens, uh, which we'll be discussing further in the podcast. Uh, Essentially, the people who are going to be affected are sole traders and partners in partnerships. The reason for the basis period reform is, according to the .gov website, to make it simpler, fairer and more transparent. So there's going to be no more double taxing of earlier years profits. And that's the important part, because when people first started with those kind of year reigns, they would have actually been taxed twice on some of their earlier year profits. And that's what we call overlap profits, those profits that have been taxed twice. And the idea behind the basis period reform is to essentially scrap that. So there's no more double taxing of those profits because HMRC have found that a lot of people lose those overlap profits. They lose the records of them or they just forget about them. And then when they stop trading or they change their year ends, They either forget or they can't claim any relief for those overlap profits. So, Jamie, I was just wondering if you might be able to give us some more information for the people out there who might not know what exactly the basis period reform means for them. Absolutely. So for businesses with an accounting period other than the 31st of March or the 5th of April, the way they calculate their business profits for their 23-24 tax returns onward will change. Basis period reform means that all self-employed individuals and partnerships will have to report their business tax information to HMRC on a tax year basis, regardless of their accounting period. So a tax year is a 12-month period which runs from the 6th of April in one year to the 5th of April in the following year. There are either two ways for you to report. You can either keep your current year end and get details from two sets of accounts to prepare your tax return on a tax year basis. However, this can lead to problems if your second set of accounts hasn't already been finished on time before the tax return filing deadline. Or the second option is you change your year end to the 31st of March or the 5th of April. So you will need to change your year end in the 23-24 tax year. This is called the transition year. This means that you'll have more than 12 months of profit subject to tax. For example, if you were a June year end, you'll be taxable on profits to the 30th of June 2023, plus nine months from July to March 24, essentially taxing 21 months. The additional nine months is called your transition profits. However, when you first started, as Emma alluded to earlier, the way the tax rules work is that you would have been taxed twice on profits at some point, and these are called your overlap profits. Yeah, so that's a really interesting point. If someone started trading, as you say, uh, 30th of June year reigns, but they actually made a loss when they first started, they wouldn't have any of these overlap profits. They don't unfortunately let you claim the loss twice in the first year they're they're happy to to have taxed it uh twice if you made a profit but um essentially you won't have those overlap profits there to be able to use so unfortunately you will 
have to pay the tax on the full extra nine months in that example. But Jamie, just to throw it back in your way, if if they have got overlap profits and they, they did make profits in those first year, what happens then? Yeah, so normally overlap profits are relieved against your profits when you cease your business or leave a partnership or change your year end. Therefore, as you're changing your year end now in the transition period, you can use those overlap profits against your transition profits. For some, this will mean bigger tax liabilities because perhaps when you started, you maybe weren't earning as much as what you're earning now and therefore your overlap profits weren't as much and they don't offset your additional month's profit which are subject to tax now in your transition period. If this is the case, HMRC is allowing you to spread the transition profits and Laura, would you mind going through how the transition profits are spread? So as mentioned, in the transitional year, if you've got any profits left after using the various reliefs, such as overlap profits, after that, you can then use spreading. Spreading is an important tool and a great thing to be able to use. It is available to everybody who has been affected by the basis reform. What it does is allow us to spread the transitional profits arising from the transitional year over the next five years. It is a simple calculation where you take the transitional taxable profits arising in the transitional year and divide it by five, which is the maximum period you can spread for. So if your transitional profits were, say, £50,000, you would include £10,000 onto your next five tax returns, which would then be taxed at your effective rate. So it can help from a cash flow point of view as you're being taxed on these profits over five years rather than all at once. Laura, if I may, um, what happens if somebody doesn't want to spread over the five years? That is a good question. Um, So spreading over the five years is the default option from HMRC, but it's not actually compulsory. So if you wish, you can bring in more than a minimum additional profit. So if we refer back to what I said earlier, £10,000 in the example I used, um, but you can do that in any of the five years, depending on what is best suited for the taxpayer. So this could be beneficial, for example, if you've had a bad year of trade and or your other income is lower. So you may then have more scope left in your basic rate band to be taxed at a lower rate. And by using that year to bring in these additional profits, you can then pay less tax overall. Um, It's worth mentioning that if you do make the election to do that, say that was in year two, then there is a formula that would recalculate the leftover transitional profits over the remaining years. So another point to mention is that if your trade ceases before the end of the five years of spreading, the remaining transitional profits is allocated to the tax year in which the trade ceases. So using my earlier example, you may spread the first two years of £10,000 per year. If you then cease trade in year three, which would be the 25-26 tax year, you've still got £30,000 on transitional profits to be taxed on. So the full £30,000 will fall into that final tax year. So hopefully overall you can see it's a great tool to use as you may have some more tax to pay than before these changes come into place. Um, So this tool will help you be able to spread that extra tax over a longer period. Thank you, Laura. That was really interesting. Um, Just to go back as well on the transition profits for any of our listeners who might have a student loan. It's just worth mentioning that the transition profits will also be subject to student loan repayments. So that may be something that we also need to consider when we're talking about whether or not we want to speed up the taxing of any of those profits. So 23-24 sounds like an interesting tax year. How can people make it easier for themselves? Yeah, definitely going to be interesting, Jamie. Um, I think the first thing to say is that a lot of people might find it easier just to change their accounting period end to either the 31st of March or the 5th of April for each tax year going forward. That way you're doing the accounts for that year and that's what you're going to be taxing. Otherwise, you're going to have a bit of a mishmash of different accounting period ends being taxed in the same tax year. You may even need to amend the previous year's tax return if the accounts hadn't been finalised at the time of filing the tax return. So changing that year end will just make that a little bit more straightforward. Hopefully we'll avoid a lot more of the admin in that regard. Um, And the other thing to consider um, is getting the records into your accountant, into us earlier, because the earlier we have those records in, the easier it is to have those conversations about the spreading 
about what kind of extra things that we might need to think about if you haven't got quite all of the records together that then gives us the opportunity to make sure we've got what we need in good time for the tax return deadline as well so that being said Laura is there anything that your farming and rural business clients need to consider at all Yeah, there is. So we've always been able to use farmers averaging, which is a beneficial tool for tax planning. The industry that is farming does suffer from fluctuating profits. So one year it could be really good and then the next year it could be really bad. It could be really up and down and sporadic. What averaging allows us to do is smooth profits over two or five years. So, for example, if a client has a really good year and pays a high amount of tax, but then for the next year, they may have a bad year and so pay a lower rate of tax. And the problem we've got here is that when you pay these high rates of tax in one year and a lower rate in another, that effective tax rate is then higher overall than what it would have been if we'd averaged a profit so that it was lower rates of tax in both years. So the good news is that we still have access to farmers averaging and the calculation is not changing. Earlier, we mentioned that on your tax return, taxable profits will be made up of your standard profit plus transitional profits. However, for averaging, we will be using your standard profit only and ignoring these transitional profits. We do have a fair amount of farming clients who do not use a 5th of April year end. And so any transitional profits they have will be ignored for farmers averaging. It will only be the taxable profit that falls into the tax year in question that is included. So the calculation won't be as simple as it's not just a case of taking the total profit from your tax return. There will be a little more work ensuring we're using the right profit figure. So it's just something to be aware of. However, averaging is not going anywhere. It just may look a little different. And Jamie, is there anything specific to discuss on your medical clients at all that they might need to consider? Yeah, definitely. So most GP practices are set up as partnerships and they'll have year-end spread throughout the whole of the year. So the basis period reform will affect all of those with a non-March year-end, so it will affect a lot of our clients. However, it will also have an impact on our pension calculations for GPs. The calculation of pensionable pay has always followed the tax return. Therefore, to work out pensionable profits where you're changing your year-end in the 23-24 tax year, following the example of a June year-end earlier, you'll work out your pensionable profits to June 23, then your pension profits to the 31st of March 24, then less your overlap pensionable profits. Your transitional profit will be able to be spread over five years like you do with the taxable profits. So it's really following the tax rules we've discussed earlier. This could mean that your pensionable pay is higher than normal for those five years. It could mean higher pension contributions on your pensionable pay as well as increasing your pension growth in the year. Higher pension growth could mean that you have an annual allowance pension tax charge to pay. Also, if you wish to access your pension within the five-year spreading time frame, then acceleration of the transitional profits may be necessary to ensure they are included in calculations for pension purposes. Thanks, Jamie. And on that massive tongue twister there, I think uh, it's time to wrap up. So thank you, Laura and Jamie, for coming along today. Thanks, Emma, for having me. Thanks for having me, Emma. Glad I supplied my first podcast. Hopefully we'll be back again soon. It's been an absolute privilege having you, Laura. And thank you to everyone who's listening. If you've got any questions at all, please do get in touch. Uh, You can find our contact details in the show notes. Thank you for joining us for Larkin Gowan Insights, accountancy and business advice for all. Don't forget, you can find more information about today's topic and more about how our team of experts can help you in your business by visiting our website, larking-gowan.co.uk. Join us again next time for another fascinating insight into the world of accounting and finance.